Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here to uh, Believers in Christ in Smithfield, Texas. Uh, this morning we'd like to start off with the verse in Luke. Uh, brother's about to bring it up here. Luke eleven twenty eight. But he said, Ye rather blessed are thy that hear the word of God and keep it. That tells us something right there. Amen. That tells us, and, and if you look at the translation of that, it says that you have God there, you have the word of God, and you got to keep practicing it. Amen. You got to keep doing it. You got to keep, you know, it's not going to be perfect every time that you're out there preaching it. You're, you're not going to be perfect. Every single word that you're going to say is not going to be perfect, but you got to keep doing it. you got to keep moving forward with Jesus. And that's the verse of, of for opening today. Um, today we have a very special uh, preacher here with us today. Uh, Brother uh, Simmons here. He's going to be preaching today in uh, Summers. Sorry, Gene Summers. Summers. I, I apologize. Uh, but anyways, thank you, and let's go ahead and start prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for everything you do, Lord Jesus. Glorify yes. and honor be your holy name, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. Let us praise you, Lord Jesus. Let our instruments, Lord Jesus, thank be of grateful you. noise to you, Lord Father. And Lord Jesus, thank you for the people that are logging in right now, Lord Jesus, to watch their sermon, Lord Father, to get that food that they need, Lord Jesus, that spiritual food, Lord Father. And let our brother here, Lord Jesus, bring that food to them, Lord Father. And they can just meditate on it, Lord Father, and give you thanks, Lord Jesus. In God's name, we give you thanks. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm up with the clock now, people. That's Praise that's God that's today. That's and because he lives, that's why we're alive. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, yeah, we are. Don't be laughing at me, man. You started first. <laughs> well, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth. thank the Lord for these two. Now I have somebody to pick on and blame. <laughs> well, because the Lord lives is why we live. God sent his son They call Oh, <laughs> 
should know God is our provider. Oh, yes, it took me a while to figure that out, though, yeah, brother. Sure. <laughs> no. uh, I always thought I was the provider yeah. uh -huh. until he made me sick, and I realized I wasn't a provider. <laughs> yeah. But he is our Jehovah Jireh. Let's yeah. pray. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. He will in his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh My provider is grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. To a gyra, my provider is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He will give his angels charge over me. God. 
special prayer now. Brother Roger, if you would come up and do a special prayer for us, please. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh, yeah. Praise the God. I mean, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad my wife's with me, <coughs> and she's getting around better, so I think I want to just praise the Lord for that. Thank God for that. Now, I was looking at the uh, 
bulletin, I like what this says. It says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Amen. And I believe that applies today, folks, that we need, and what I'm thinking of, working for the Lord, trying to get people into the kingdom. Praise God. And the prayer list is uh, Noel, Mike, Tora, Janice, my wife, Paula, that's her sister, Ari Ariela, David, Brother Lois, Ashley, Harry Jones, and Donna Clay needs prayer for healing. And special needs is Brother Doyle Jones and Sherry Lynn and Mike Coon. And so I know there's a lot of needs today. And I know that we serve a God that meets and answers every prayer. Amen. 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 I know we go through a lot of things. And sometimes we do that. I don't have the answer for that except it's just to make us better. That's what I believe in. Make us better. Better and trust on Him. Trust in Him. And He's the one that we need to trust to and lean on. Amen. Does anybody else have any requests? Pray for that. Any other outspoken requests? Let's remember our church and remember those that are not here. And, uh, uh, yeah, I have a request. My grandson left yesterday to go to uh, Detroit, Michigan for a week on a missions trip. He Amen. is going to be ministering to the Muslims. Amen. Okay. Praise he did this last year. Praise God. Um, he was supposed to have some people go with him last year, and as it turned out, he went up by himself, so they all backed out at the last minute. But yesterday he had two of his um, classmates from school. They went up there, so they're going to be there for a week. Uh, and you know, it's interesting to me because Samuel has always been the real quiet type. You know, just kind of laid back and everything. And I was surprised that he wanted to go last year. But when he was up there, he called his mama and he said, "I don't want to come home." He said, "I love it up here, Praise talking the to these people." Yes, amen. He really got a heart for the Muslim people. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus. That takes something. Yes, I think. It does. Amen. amen. Right. And so when it came time this year, in fact, she told me about two weeks ago, he's going back to Detroit. I said, what? I didn't hear anything about that. She said, oh, yeah, he's been planning for this for a year. So they left yesterday. He'll come back Saturday, and we need to pray for his safety. But we need to pray that he would be able to be a real blessing. And he... I don't know. He may end up being a missionary to the Muslims somewhere. I don't know. You know? So he's in his third year of Bible school now. But what amazes me is that God has changed the change in his life. And that has, you just don't have any idea. He's just been so quiet. Y'all were standing back when he was a little kid. Well, now he's like six feet something. <laughs> and, um, but he really has a heart for the Lord. Amen. Praise and I just, the Lord. we just need to be praying Praise for him. Praise the Lord. Right there. Amen. Amen. You know, we need to pray for the Muslims. Uh, we had a mission, yeah. church I was pastoring years ago, missionary to the Muslims, said that more Muslims are getting saved today than ever before. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, that's good. Thanks the Lord for that. So yeah. I just made me remind me of that. So let's just pray Amen. pray for all our missionaries that's on the field, and especially our grandson. And Any other requests? Okay, let's just uh, stand. Let's take these requests to the Lord yes, in prayer, Jesus. if you'd like. And uh, let's pray for our pastor. She'll be, or no, not our pastor, but Brother Summers. Brother Summers. Preaching. <laughs> pray for him. And I appreciate Brother Summers. I appreciate talking to him about old time. We know some of the same ministers and things. So, so let's just pray. Father, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for each one that's here. And God, we're asking right now, God, that you meet every need, Father. Every need has been made known. Those that need healing. We know that you're the great healer, the great physician. And we know, Lord, you said that if we could ask anything in your name, it shall be done. And we're asking and believing, God, Father, right now, help, Father, our unbelief, God. If we have any there, and most of us do, Lord, God, not all of us, Lord, some little part of us, Lord, always reminded the man said, help my unbelief. And God, I pray, Father, right now, God, that you'd just move in a mighty way, Father, for we're looking to you. Bless the pastor and preacher as he preaches the word. That's the remainder portion of our service. We ask God that you, we know that you're there. We know that you're on the throne. We know that you're coming back soon. We ask, Father, right now for everything, God, that you just move by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Okay, we're going to take up the... Uh,
offering at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Lois to be able to come receive the offering. I will remind you, if you're going to write a check out, write it to Believers in Christ Fellowship. And at the bottom, memo line, put in love offering. And we'll be able to separate it out like that. Okay, before we... Okay. Before we pray over the offering, uh, I just want to say this. Not very much I get to take up the offering. I believe that you can outgive God. And if you give, as the Lord lays upon your heart to give, give it as unto the Lord. Right. God will bless you That's for right. it. Amen. I believe that. I believe paying tithes, first of all, yep. and then giving to the work of the ministry of God. And this is what this is going for, Brother Summers. He's our evangelist and preacher. That's right. Amen. And uh, God will bless you for that. Amen. I believe it. It's not that God needs your money, but if he's got you, he's got your money. Yeah, right. Now, if you don't have, if you don't have you, you don't have your money. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Right. But we're, we're <laughs> we have we're supposed to be talking, taking care of our ministers, and our evangelists. We're supposed to take care of them. Amen. And this is all that they have to depend upon. The man preaches every Sunday, yeah, I mean. somewhere, Amen. somewhere, yeah. and that's all they. He doesn't have a job. Yep. Otherwise, you know, a real job, right? <laughs> right. And it's, bi it's biblical. I've read so, the scriptures. It's it biblical, biblical to support yes. the ministry. Amen. Support the ministry. Amen. <laughs> Father God, as we come before you, Lord, we thank you for this offering we're about to receive. We ask God, Father, that you bless each one as they give, as they give it as unto you, Lord, for the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. And we ask it, Father, right now, God, that you just bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm on my way to heaven, and a journey gets sweeter ever. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, all along the way. Now my soul is happy, I shout in my faith. Yes, I'm on my way to heaven, and a journey gets sweeter every day. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, all along the way. Now my soul gets a happy, I shout and I sing night and day. Cause I'm on my way journey gets sweeter every day one more time yes i'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day walking with jesus talking with jesus all along the way now my soul gets a happy I shout and I sing night and day Cause I'm on my way to heaven And the journey gets sweeter every day Yes, I'm on my way to heaven And the journey gets sweeter every day Amen. Lord bless you. Everybody happy this morning? Amen. Good. You're in church. You need to be happy. Amen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if you come to church with a frown on your face when you leave, you better have a smile on your face. Amen. Amen. Be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's so good to be in church this morning. We welcome you to Believers in Christ Fellowship here in the sanctuary and also on social media. I'm glad to have everyone that's joining us this morning. And, and uh, without you folks, we couldn't do it. I mean, well, yeah. we could. Actually, we could do it. 
but it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Amen. Right. We need to have people here to fellowship. Our body is a fellowship. Amen. When we get together, we get together as a fellowship to fellowship with the Lord and fellowship with each other. Amen. Right. And so we always want to remember that for sure. Um, so we welcome you this morning. I have a couple of announcements. There will not be a Bible study Wednesday night. We will have our Wednesday night off this week. And uh, so we want to remember that for sure. Also, I want to remind you to be given in missions. We need to be giving to missions. We have five missionaries that we support in this church. And so we really need to, sometimes we need to be reminded to give in missions. And we used to say, well, second Sunday of the month was Mission Sunday. Well, it doesn't have to be the second Sunday. It can be any Sunday of the month. Amen? Right. Sure. And so we can give to missions at any time that you there are feel led to it. And um, I appreciate what Brother Coon said a while ago. You cannot outgive the Lord. Amen? You can try all you want. The more you give to try to outgive what he thinks, it's going to come right back and you're going to get more. Amen? You cannot, I always, I remember the this testimony I remember of J.C. Penney. You remember how, who the J.C. Sure. Penney was? Well, <laughs> when he was young, he started to give money. And when he got a little bit older, he had some uh, business that he had. And he began to give tithes on that. And he thought, well, I'm going to give a little more than tithe and see what happens. Well, the more he gave in tithes, he, business began to get a little bit better off, you know. And so he said more, and he ended up giving 90% of his income to tithes. Mm -hmm. Amen? And when he did, he didn't outgive the Lord. Guess what? His business became a very, very large profitable business. Mm -hmm. And there have been other people. The man who does um, Hobby Lobby, kind of the same testimony with that. And so I'm going to tell you something. You cannot give, outgive God. Amen. Amen. And we're talking about tithing, but we're also talking about missions. And I believe this church has kept going all these years because we give to missions. Amen. You can never convince me any other way. Yeah. We give to missions, and it's going to keep going. Yes. I was talking to Brother Doyle Jones this past week. He made, it, he made his trip to Nigeria for a week, and he got back, and he said it was great. He had a great testimony. And the interesting was he was preaching to a group of Baptist ministers, in one particular time, and he said 16 of them got filled with the Spirit. Wow. And I said, ooh, I bet that stirred up something there, <laughs> all the Baptists wow. getting filled with the Spirit. Wow. He said, no, no, you don't understand. Over there, overseas, they're hungry. They don't have this barrier right. because they're Baptists. They yeah. can't get filled. Amen. Right. And so he said the pastor was filled with the Spirit, and he said they had 16 of the ministers that were filled, all Baptists. And I amen. said, wow, <laughs> so amen, amen on that, amen. But he had one lady that was completely deaf, I guess from birth. They prayed for her, and she was healed instantly. Amen. Wow. God God's can do all That's things, I'm telling you. Right they had 43 saved in one particular service there. So uh, we will be having him come back uh, sometime this year. He actually wanted to come tonight, and I said, because he's actually preaching this morning in Bastrop. And I said, I don't think we can do it tonight, <laughs> but we will have him back soon. But um, be praying for Brother Jones also as he's on the mission field because going to Nigeria was a new experience for him. He usually goes to Central America and such as that. But isn't God good? Yes, isn't yes, God yes, good? Yes, yes. But I said all that to say this. We need to continue on yes. to support our mission, missionaries and our evangelists and people that are out there on the field. We can't do it ourselves, but we can support them who are doing it. Amen. Yes, amen. So we want to be sure we remember that. Okay. We have a little special thing this morning before I have Brother Summers come up. We're, gonna, um, we're going to accept a new member into our church. Amen. 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 Yeah. So I'm going to have Brother Mark come up here, Mark Flowers. He's been coming for a while now. We were having class the other day and telling him, kind of showing with him and sharing with him what we believe in this church the fundamental truths and all, and we got to the part of divine healing, and I said, you know something about divine healing, don't you? And <laughs> wow. This man was on a deathbed, I'm telling yeah. you. We yeah. went up to visit with him. He had some H and tubes in him and wires and everything going on that um, it was amazing. And I, from what he tells me is Shorty and Stephanie were up there quite often. You were up there most all the time, right? 22 days. 22 days. Praying for him days. and trying to tell the nurses what they were doing. They just kind of laughed at it, did they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Left it, didn't think God was going to heal him. Well, guess what? Amen. He's healed. Amen. Right He's healed. That's Praise a miracle. That's yeah. a miracle. 
Don't tell me God can't heal. God can heal. Amen. That's right. That's Sister, right. God's healed her of cancer a couple of times. What you're going through right now, God's going to heal it. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. I don't care what it is we have in our situation. And I'm going to tell you, our daughter went through the same kind of thing. She went so far down, she had a cardiac arrest, and, and we were going to um, try to prolong her life and help her to be more comfortable until she can get some rehab. The neurologist came in and said, oh, let her just die. Yeah. She'll have another cardiac arrest and she'll die, just let her go. As a mama, I said, oh, no. No, we're going to see what God can do. God lifted her up. She That's went right. back to the hospital That's a few right. weeks, about two months later, walked in there, and she's used to seeing the looks on those nurses' faces. They looked at her and she said, I'm Rebecca Colvin. I'm the one that you thought was going to die. <laughs> God can heal. Let me tell you what. Amen. Right. So he is a living Woo. testimony. But we're going to welcome you into our fellowship this morning, Thank Believers you. in Christ <laughs> Fellowship. He knows the Lord. He's trusted him as his Savior. Amen. Amen. And he, um, he wants to get in here and help us work. In the scripture Paul talked about, he said, we are all a body of Christ. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Some are our eyes. Some are the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. Some are the mouths. Some are the hands. Don't take offense, but some of your mouths. <laughs> it needs to be the good way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Worship the Lord and, and speak for him. Amen. But we all work together. We all need to work together. And we cannot do it just one person. Only. Right. We need to all Amen. work together. And so we're going to present you with a membership this morning. It says, this certifies that Mark Flowers is hereby received into membership, having confirmed faith, confessed faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and having promised to support and participate in the life of the church. Oh, thank you. So this is yours. I have an envelope for you also, but you can put that on the wall or whatever you want to do. Uh, this is to show you that you are a member of our church. Oh, well, okay. That's pretty, thank you. You're welcome. So, praying, man. <laughs> there you go. And Brother Shorty and Stephanie, you have been really special with them, and they want to present something to so, you also. My father always told me, your Bible is your sword. Amen. Your sword. Amen. What, what, is, what does a soldier do with his sword? He takes it to the enemy. Who's the enemy? The devil's the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. We present you with your sword, Mark, oh. to defend yourself from the enemy. So when the enemy comes to attack you, you pull out your sword. We love you. Amen. We've seen you wow. in the worst Amen. times. Praise yeah. right. the Lord. We Amen. saw the Lord pull you out of it, Mark. That's Amen. right. Yeah. And we praise you for that. Amen. And we learned a lot from it. Amen. We learned so much from it because my wife was there, like she said, 20 something days. Days on her knees, days reading to you, pulling that sword out, fighting for you. Yeah. But God ultimately said, It's my choice. Right. I'm going to let him survive. And now you're giving him thanks. So we present you with your sword, Mark. We love you, man. Amen. You so <laughs> God bless, bless you. you. Yeah, my, amen. My, my. Amen. I wow. think we need to gather whoever wow. would like to come up front here and let's gather around Mark right. and amen. pray for him. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. amen. You can get your name on it. How about that? <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Lord, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord Jesus, for Mark and for his, his uh, desire to serve you, Lord, and to be a member of this fellowship, Lord. We're thanking you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done for him, Lord, for bringing him back from the doors of death, Lord. You're able to use him now in your glory for your purpose, Lord Jesus. We're thanking you, Lord Jesus, for your, all your blessings for him and your promises unto him, Lord Jesus. We're thanking you. We're asking now that you would just reach down and touch him, Lord. Bless him from the head of to the toes, Lord Jesus. Be with him, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Help him to be a ministry for us. Come in. Hallelujah. To be part of this church, Lord. To be a fellowship. Touch him, Lord Jesus. Keep him strong in the word. Keep him strong in the faith, Lord. We're thanking you ahead of time for this. We're faithful this, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome, brother. Nice to meet you, Mark. Amen. Bless you, Gene. Gene. Amen. That'll be easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We appreciate each and every one that's a member of our church. Amen. And uh, let me tell you something. God looks at the heart, not numbers. Right. Numbers are good, that's but right. God looks at the heart. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. he looks at your motives. 
At the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be judged for your motives, your attitude. That's Amen. Right. Not the numbers. Yeah. Amen. But we're thankful for the numbers we have. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. We're so glad to have Brother Gene Summers with us this morning. And uh, he's going to be ministering to us. And we're just uh, waiting to hear what he has to say for the Lord. You know, the Lord always speaks through him. Right. Amen. And we just open your heart this morning and, and just let the Lord deal with you and, and just bless you tremendously. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. I'm a part of the family. I'm so loud. I'm so loud. I, I apologize. I apologize to uh, those uh, watching. Uh, I, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to preach. And every once in a while, I get to be in on a service, whether it be a communion or a baby dedication or when they're receiving members. But I just think that, that we, we need to give notice to the enemy whenever we receive new members just the enemy needs to know uh, we we're putting on some help we've uh, you know we're gunning for you devil you know uh, I I I did my best last night Mark when pastor started giving me your testimony about uh, being almost unto death and uh, there's probably people at that hospital according to your testimony that just wrote him off. And uh, it's amazing to me that, you know, that's when that's when Jesus steps in. That's right, that's right. When the enemy just counts you out, you know, just know this, that somebody else has got the power to make the decision. He holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He holds the keys to my life. And uh, it's not over till he says it's over. You'll always have that testimony. I, um, I, 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 Mona and I are, are thrilled to be with you today. I love being an itinerant evangelist. Uh, Mona and I were in El Paso some time back preaching at First Assembly for, uh, for uh, Phil and Turi Sanders. And uh, I don't know why this thought came to me this morning. I guess all the things, the blessings that you've received lately in the Lord healing people. You know, Mona last year faced uh, breast cancer, and uh, I was there when they handed her a T-shirt. She rang that bell Amen. after her last radiation treatment. It didn't mean that, um, that there weren't some other surgeries that had to be performed and some other things. And, and of course, some of you know that cancer... Is the uh, is the curse that just keeps on giving? So uh, even though she doesn't have cancer, every few months now she has to go for a body scan and and all the the, the testing to make sure that it stays gone. Which I thank the Lord for. But I'm just telling you, uh, God's been very good to us. We were preaching out in in El Paso at First Assembly and. And I remember I'd been preaching in, uh, for, about, uh, uh, oh, oh, we had set aside a Tuesday night for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, pastor had requested that I do that. And uh, so on Tuesday night, I, I gave the altar call for people that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's this beautiful little 16-year-old teenager, black lady, just, just as pretty as she could be. 
and and I could tell that she, she was somewhat upset. So I had been praying with people, and people were being filled with the Spirit. When I got to her, I said, sweetheart, so you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost? And she said, well, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. She said, but just uh, but just a while ago, I, uh, I, I left my home. She said, uh, uh, my dad was chasing my mother with a butcher knife and wanting to kill her. He has been out drinking for over a week or so. And he came home, and he's, 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 uh, he, I, I don't know what's happened to my family. I know they called the, the law. They've called the cops on them. I'm sure they're there, she said. But before anything drastic happened, I looked up, and I saw your church van picking up some teenagers next door to me, some of my friends, and I just ran down there and jumped on your van, and I came to church tonight. And, uh. Man, that night we uh, we not only led her to the Lord, we began to pray. Angels of protection around her mama and family back at home, and uh, I left there on a Wednesday. I she came back on Wednesday night and got filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. It was it was a highlight of her week, and. Uh, the pastors told us that that following Sunday, we left and got on a plane and flew back to Houston area. And of all things, she brought her family to church. Mom and daddy got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. In a few months, they began in leadership in that church. And you just it's just amazing to me that whenever the enemy comes against us like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, raises up a standard against him. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him shall I trust. Woo, my. So uh, we greet you. Hey, uh, will y'all welcome Mona this morning Amen. and thank her for getting in the car and coming with me. Amen. My goodness, I... Uh, I, I really have a greater confidence. And people have a tendency to believe my stories better when she's sitting there. <laughs> and so uh, it's good. Thank you, Pastor. I love you, Pastors. I love the heart that they have for this community. Uh, I would submit to you that uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm knocking on uh, another birthday in April, on April the 2nd. And uh, goodness, what, what happened to my 60s or 50s? Or my, it's amazing how uh, I, I turned 70 and I was proud of it. I bragged all, to all of y'all last year about being 70. But I don't know that I signed up to be 71. My goodness, what, when did all this take place? What happened to high school? My goodness. I think high school is over 50 years ago for me. My goodness. But uh, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have took better care of myself. <laughs> but I'm, now I've adopted that saying J.B. Lenny used to have. What was it, uh, you know, it, you know, about, uh, uh, oh, oh, it, yeah. Uh, let's see, getting older is not for sissies. That's it. Boy, think about it. Man, getting old is not for sissies. And I'm, boy, I'm right in there with that. Goodness. Thank you for letting us come. I, um, uh, you, you, I, well, I'm, let me tell you, uh, when she mentions Doyle Jones, you need to know something about some of us that are ministers that, that ha I had Doyle Jones preach revivals for me uh, at Cathedral of Praise, at Old River Assembly of God. I, uh, Doyle Jones is a powerful revivalist. The, Doyle Jones is the one that goes can go into Central America and stir up thousands of people Amen. for the power of the Holy Ghost. And I, when you told me he's 81 years old, uh, I'll have to call him. Mona, remind me on the way home today. I'll call Doyle and, you know, just rag on him a little bit about being an old man, 81. But he just got back from Nicaragua. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever... 
Nigeria, Nigeria. Have you ever flew overseas? I'm going to tell you, I flew to several trips overseas. And if you have not sat there in coach for 19 hours to fly to Calcutta, India, you just have missed a trip. And those chairs are not near as wide as these nice chairs. Oh, my goodness. I've, so I've, I, you know, I, I've just flown all over the world. And I just, to think that he can do that at his age and still function. And the, some people got blessed because of it. I'm just saying, when he comes, y'all get ready. You'll enjoy it. If you have your Bibles, I want to go to Psalm 51. And many, many would call this the, the, the prayer of David. And uh, David has David has created a scene for himself. David has had a prophet of God, Nathan, stick his finger in his face whenever Nathan described to him a situation about a little lamb and how that little lamb was stolen and and from a very poor person and somebody that could not defend themselves and. When David said, I'll, 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 I'll give this man death, we'll kill him. And Nathan puts his finger in his face and says, what? Thou art the man. Woo! Had to be the lowest place in David's life. Why? Because he's failed God. i tell you, as a kid, I, you know, running from God, and I, I've, I've told when I would go and preach at uh, Faith Christian Center over in Pasadena, Texas, where uh, Johnny McDuff is a pastor now. I used to, I, I could tell Johnny uh, for years when I was performing on over there on Spencer Highway, a kid running from God, singing country music. I, I would drive by that church where it says, and conviction power would set upon me simply driving by the church, knowing that that God had called me to do a lot different than what I was doing. And uh, I can't even imagine David, uh, the, his heart, when he realizes, you know, and God would say this about David himself, that he was a man after his own heart. But David, you know, it's amazing. I, I would to God that he would, Hey, that he would say some things about me. What was it said about Abraham? God said about Abraham, said he's a friend of God. Uh, how about Caleb, uh, a man with another spirit? What did God say about Daniel? He had a more excellent spirit. And I'm sorry, I'm preaching before I even read my text. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of how it would be to have God go out on a limb and, and name you and tell you where he you fit in the kingdom. And God looks at David and said, he's a friend. He's not only a friend of God, he's a man after my own heart. Had a heart of love. He displayed that before Jonathan. He did that uh, to little Mephibosheth. My goodness, I could go on and on about the heart of David and, and to know how he failed God. Oh, what it, what it ought to be. When, when you and I, when we fail, the heartbreak of it all. I was talking to someone, well, last night I know we covered this, but I was sitting with my mother earlier this last week, and, 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 and I told her about how in the Methodist movement, when they first started, they had a mourner's bench where people literally came and that wanted to be changed, and they were remorseful for their sin. There was a day that we used to shed a tear over sinful nature in our life. So when I read Psalm 51, and I hear the heart of David in verses 10, 11, and 12, I want you to be able to catch a vision of a man that is so heartbroken. In the 10th verse, Psalm 51, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In the King James, it says a right spirit. Verse 11, do not cast me away from your presence 
and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Would you pray with me? Father, I just love you and I, I thank you because your loving kindness is better than life. Living for you, Jesus, has been the sweetest thing. Woo! God, I'm so moved that you took this backslidden preacher's kid and you let, didn't only let me back in, you let me work for you. Put an election upon my life and elected me to this place. I just, oh Lord, I thank you that you chose me. Woo. Lord, I pray with the church today that that you would so touch my heart that you would help me preach mighty oracles of God and touch my tongue, make it as a pen of the ready writer, and you touch every ear that hears what I have to preach today, and I pray that you would anoint it with your power. It's your word in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. 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 I believe I could have an altar call. Amen. Huh. Mona, will you hand me a... a a handkerchief out of I'm, I've got them in my briefcase there. I want to preach to you about spiritual renewal. I think the last time I was here, I talked to you about spiritual vision. I I I I I'll do my best not to try to do so much of a introduction and a warm up as I have in the past, but and I know t time is a a sacred thing. But I I I would just love to tell you that that the, uh, the enemy of our souls would love to take us down. And, and I, I don't think everybody has got to have a Davidic testimony. I don't believe you really have to go out and fail God to feel his touch and feel his blessing. Thank you, baby. I, uh, I, when I talk about spiritual renewal, I think about how many spiritual things that we dictate to be spiritual in our lives. I love living in the spirit. I love this feeling. I, um, uh, I, I want to stay in a spirit of repentance because I'm still in the flesh. Uh, I know there are people that, that uh, preach that uh, you can't backslide. And, and the problem with that is I was the poster child for backslidden condition. My daddy... Uh, Assemblies of God minister pastored there in Channel View, Texas. And uh, man, you know, me and my brother Russell, he sat us down one time uh, on a Naugahyde couch. I'll never forget. Y'all remember Naugahyde? Yeah, I do. I used to wonder how many Naugas did it take to kill to make a, all that hide? Yeah. I think that was some old plastic cloth, wasn't it? And uh, had them old wagon wheel ends on that couch, you know. And Dad set us there. Dad's pastor in that church there. He said, look, I, I don't get it. it. It was me and Russell. Brian, he, he was still, um, I don't think he had reached the, the age of, uh, well, yeah. He, he just good kid. But uh, me and old Russell, he looked at us and said, I'm trying my best to pastor this community, and y'all are painting the town red. Now, surely some of you elders know what that phrase means. In East Texas, they'd know what it meant, I'll tell you. And we were just turning that town upside down, but it wasn't for Jesus. And uh, But uh, I, uh, the spiritual renewal, uh, you know, renewal means to turn back or return as a soul that is straight away or, or that has walked away from God. Uh, when my dad was in the hospital, he spotted that DNR wrist, a band on him, and about 2 o'clock in the morning, I wasn't happy about it. And I, I, I knew what it, I mean, I wasn't happy that he woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning to talk about it. Hey, you know, I knew he had a DNR band over there. He kept looking at it. What was that? I said, it means do not resuscitate. If you die, you dead, you gone. And, boy, he like jumped straight out of that hospital bed. Uh, what? I didn't sign up for that. I said, yes, you did. 
You and mom, y'all put your names on the dotted line. Well, you wait till your mother gets here in the morning. I said, well, y'all just have your skippy time, but you signed up for it. That's why it's on your wrist. And I found out dad wanted some renewal. I found out dad actually wanted to live. Isn't that crazy? I mean, y'all could have lost that man last week, huh? I except, except that he had a will to live, you know? And God's brought him back. I know what spiritual renewal is, and I, I know what physical renewal is. But uh, I'm telling you, th this thing renewal, it can happen to an individual, and it can happen to an organization. It can happen to a church. A church can get down on themselves, can get to the place where they believe all is lost, only for the Lord to, to help and remind us that he's still on the throne. He's still a prayer answering God. And the church has got to come back to that place of revival or spiritual renewal. It may not include the evangelist. It may just have something to do with the power of God landing on us this next Sunday morning. Who, who knows? But we need to get back to revival because this is no time for business as usual. I gotta tell you, it's just a, it's part of my introduction. But I, I, I believe I need to testify that about ten years ago, I was uh, over in uh, Victoria, Texas, and uh, preaching revival. And when I got through on a Wednesday night, I was headed back home, and Mona assumed her position over in the passenger side, sound asleep. Amen. By the end, by I mean. By the time we got pulled out of the parking lot, she looked like a little cub bear over there, and she was she was she was sound asleep. And me and the Lord were having a, a, a little talk, and I said, Lord, I don't mean to make a documentary out of this, but I'm out here trying to win everybody else's kids and get them saved, and mine are at home trying to go to hell in a handbasket. And, and, and I can just, Mona can tell you, there has been a wonderful turn of events Amen. since uh, this past August and September in our family. I'll tell you, instead of chasing six grandkids and, and four, four kids of, of our own, uh, uh, two daughters and two son-in-laws, to get back in the house of God, we're only chasing a handful now because there's been a great revival in our family. We have a grandson who has a call of God on his life to preach this gospel. You can just imagine what I, I never want to ever be guilty of trying to call my own children or grandchildren in the ministry. But when God gets a hold of their life, Brother Coon, and turns their life around, it is amazing for me to watch and see what God can do. And 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 I I was just sitting by the phone when the phone rang and it's a, a grandson in college out in Marshall, Texas, saying, I'm coming home. I'm getting right with God. I want to live for him. The Lord's doing something in my life. He, since that time, he has been helping college, some college kids get saved and living for God. I'm just telling you, it is amazing to me what spiritual renewal will do for any of us. It'll take a church, and it will take it from its doldrums, and it will totally turn it around to the place where the, the people that live in it who were in their doldrums become a glory manufacturer. See, the status quo that we're, we have tolerated in the past will not meet the demands of a world that's gone mad. We've tolerated some things. We've allowed some things to discourage us. And I'll tell you something. I, I used to hear Don Branco preach this years ago. Friends, it's not about nickels and noses. It's not about how many members you got and how much money you got in the bank. It's about how much you have put forth an effort as a body of Christ to win souls. For he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Amen. The enemy of our soul, the devil himself is on a rampage. Yeah. yeah. Tried to kill you years ago. Yeah. And he tried to kill you last week. Tried to kill Mona last year. Come on. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. 
Some of y'all got a testimony, and he has put his sights on, on the church, and he is he's put his sights on the church, and he's willing to pull the trigger if we'll just stay in his sights. And it, it puzzles me, but I, I, you know, I, I knew, I knew when uh, that uh, Clint, I forgot his last name, he took a song out of the Bible, went to the enemy's camp, took back what he stole from me. Y'all remember singing it? We used to sing it 20, 30 stanzas at a time, so over and over. And I knew, I, I said this to myself, we're going to sing that little chorus to death. We're going to run that chorus in the ground, and we did. But it still does not belabor the point that we still have the ability to go back to the enemy's camp and take back from the enemy what he took from us. You can go back and get your family. You can go back and get the kids and grandma. You can go back and, and get people who were your next-door neighbors. God has opened the door for salvation. My goodness. And I, I want the, us to know that, that that option is still available. So our church, in the light of this introduction, our church has got to be a place for refreshing for the thirsty. Isaiah 44 and 3, it says, God has promised, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Boy, I, I, I uh, preach out in, uh, out in Arizona, and uh, I, uh, I, 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 could, I could tell you that there are some desert places out there in Arizona. Uh, I asked the pastor, I said, y'all got some bridges out here where you don't need bridges. He said, you think not. And I said, well, you've got drainage ditches out here, and there's no water to be seen. And he said, you would not believe that there are torrential rains that come to those Arizona deserts. And he said, it doesn't happen but a few times in a year. He said, but when it does, it floods. And he said, that old desert ground soaks that water up, but until it does, it will run right down into the middle of town if it doesn't have anywhere to drain. It'll come out of those mountains, out of those rocks and down through the streets, but you can see, I'm telling you, friend, we have been at a place in our churches where we had become dry ground, and what we're asking the Lord to do today is come and rain upon us again. Open up the heavens and pour your spirit back upon us. Help us. To, we've been thirsty, and we need something to suffice that thirst. Give us souls for the kingdom. You bring new souls to the kingdom and there be some excitement. Mark may not understand this this morning, but there's excitement in among us believers today for a sinner has come home. Right. Uh, God has given us and, and God has included him into our membership and, and caused him to be. It brings life to a church. <coughs> I, uh, Jesus said in in Luke, the 11th chapter, if thou, you being uh, evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I, I, I don't know why we've reduced ourselves to spiritual paupers so many times when God honestly wants to bless you. Boy, there are people, I don't know why they would uh, fend themselves off of God's blessings and not want him to touch you. But I want you to understand that the reason the Lord loves to touch you and elevate you, whether it's in your attitude, your finances, whatever perspective in your life, wherever you're at, the Lord wants to renew you and give you power and give give you strength and give you ability because he's doing his best to make an example out of his own. He wants to show the rest of the world what it looks like when somebody lives for Jesus. Right. I love this living for him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The church has got to be a place for 
deliverance of those that are tormented. Jesus believed this, and he preached it in his hometown of Nazareth. He, in Luke 4 and 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And we've got to... We, we have got to produce and continue to produce an atmosphere that is conducive to the deliverance move, uh, movement and deliverance ministry in our churches. There are people that come to our churches that struggle with demon oppression. It may not be possession, but the enemy has beat their brains out. Now, that terminology works in East Texas. I hope it will work here. Uh, the enemy has just beat their brains out. They're, 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 uh, they're discouraged. One of the best tools that the enemy knows to use against us is, is, is discouragement and despondency. Uh, and you, I think he hall writ, wrote a song on it, Gloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. That's sick when the evangelist has to memorize that, isn't it? They're carrying oppression, depression, a spirit of abuse. Ladies that, and, 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 and women that God would place in the church, that they, it's hard for them to turn loose of the abuse of the past, things that many of us gentlemen would never know anything about things that they've never even related to their, their closest of relatives, hurts and pains of the past. And they come in these doors, and they're looking for something. And I'll tell you what they, they want. They want somebody in the name of Jesus to stop and, and love on them and tell them, we're so glad to have you today. We're so glad you decided to come into Believers in Christ Fellowship because you're going to find us to be an old wet slippery creek bank because if you hang around us very long you will slip in yep. <laughs> you're going to find us to be the lovingest bunch because that's what in Christ that's what we are Amen. we're, we're the, the, those that need deliverance you need salvation we can help you with that you need baptism of the Holy Ghost we can help you with that you need divine healing in your body well that's my next point yeah what they don't need is some spiritual hypochondriac I struggle with these people I, I don't know if it's a hyper faith bunch that I struggle with or are spiritual hypochondriacs. You know, you know the spirit, you know the hypochondriac. You know, you, somebody comes in, they're they're belabored. They need Jesus. They need somebody to help them. They need somebody that has got some altar experience, knows how to kneel somewhere and put their arm around them and pray them through to victory. That's what they're looking for. But what they get is, oh, you think you got trouble? Let me tell you what happened to me in my life. And, and, and as a pastor, back when I had a real job and I was pastoring, those kind of moments, Brother Coon, the spirit of slap would come all over me. I didn't know you could have that. Thank you for those looks. I never assaulted anybody. I'll tell you, I've heard a few hamburgers, but I've never assaulted anybody. I, I, I just... I'm just telling you, God help us to get in our mind. You're at church here today. Why? To get better so that when this evangelist gets in his car and goes on home, this pastor goes home to her place, that the, the, the enemy has got to watch it now because you have been released on this neighborhood. 
you by the power of the Holy Spirit are now to go and seek those that should be that should be saved. Those that are lost, they need to come home. They need to find out what you found out that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I tell the pastor last night when I pastored in Houston over there on the corner of Walk and Don't Walk. Um, Man, I've, I, he was so mean, I wouldn't mind telling you his name. He, I don't know why he come to church there, honestly. I'd ask him, brother, how are you doing today? Terrible, terrible, terrible. And if he was teasing me and cutting up, I could have read it in his face. But that old gnarled lip and... It was almost like when my daughter was a teenager and, and she said to you, whatever. Boy, oh, this, there's some of you parents who remember that. Boy, I, uh, it, it just, I, 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 want, I, want, I wanted my church to be in a position to say if you're oppressed, if the enemy has stolen everything sweet and good in your life, I, could 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 we just make a trip to the altar? Could we just kneel at this chair? Could we just kneel here somewhere and, and let's just embrace the Holy Spirit and give God a chance? How many times would the Lord, the Bible says that his eyes are searching to and fro throughout the land there in 2 Chronicles because he wants to bless those that have obeyed his laws and and, and loved his his judgment. I'll tell you, friend, I, I want I want God to take believers in Christ. And when you leave here today, let you know that little can become much when it's placed in the master's hands. You need to live a victorious life. Our, our church has got to be one that understands that there are people coming. Some of them eat up with grief. Some of them that come in are going to have... Uh, Purple hair on one side, yellow on the other. I went to a convenience store the other day, and I made sure none of y'all had this piercing but so I could talk about it. But when she talked to me, she had a, a stud of some kind, a bolt or something, sticking through her tongue. And, and I didn't want to accuse her of having a, a, a hair lip impediment. I, I'm not making fun of people who do, but I knew there was something wrong, and it was that bolt through that tongue, and she couldn't hardly count out my change. For I, It doesn't matter what they look like. No, it don't. They're tattooed. They're, my, I know my daddy felt convicted, Brother Coon, back years ago because in the military when he fought in Korea, he got a little J. His name was James. Didn't know he was going to marry a Joyce when he come home, fortunately for him. But he, until till he realized my mama's name was Joyce, he was going to have that little J removed. And I'm telling you, they're, they're out there, they're tattooed on their face, their ears, their back. I am just telling you, they may come in here. That's right. That's right. They may sit beside you. Yes, they will. Don't shout me down when I'm doing so good. I'm telling you, I, our church has got to be a, a house of healing for the sick and the afflicted. I, Mark, Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow them which believe in my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, and they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Right. Jim and Joy Summers, my mom and daddy. Dad died uh, last month was three years ago. And I miss him terribly. I really do. I miss him. But I wouldn't bring him back for anything in the world. But the, when I was a kid, 
And uh, they diagnosed me with muscular dystrophy when I was probably two years old. And boy, for three years, I struggled. I, they put stainless steel braces on my legs. I cried many times all night long. My daddy was going to the University of Houston during the day for an education straight out of being uh, out of coming out of the honorable discharge out of the Air Force fighting in Korea. And he comes home and and him and mom marry. A year later I'm I I I, I discovered America. And uh, never dreamed that they'd have a child that was so afflicted with with something so horrible. And uh, and muscular dystrophy was about to take me down. They designed some, they thought if they put braces on my legs, that if I could continue to walk, that I would get stronger. They didn't know much about muscular dystrophy. They, they just did, were able to diagnose mine. They sure weren't sure that it, at one time that it was not multiple sclerosis, but realized that it dealt with my legs and not my spine. I'll tell you, those were three miserable years of my parents' lives, watching me die, just watching me go down. And, and they had scheduled an appointment at Texas Children's Hospital. Honestly, Texas Children's Hospital wasn't much bigger than this building right here, on this little corner right here, they, they, because they were nothing but a clinic. There was no hospital. If you've been to Houston in any time or been in Texas Children's Hospital and look around, it would blow you away to realize where they came from. But I was one of those that went to that little clinic down there on Main Street in Houston. And I can tell you that, that they tried every way in the world. They, would, they, were, they studied me, and that's all they could do because there was no healing. There was no medication. There was no physical therapy that they could put me through that was going to give my legs back. But a church, a Pentecostal Church of God church in Channel View, Texas, old Dale Dale Tabernacle, I am telling you that Gordon Gibson got up one day and told them, we're going to pray around the clock. Just in a week or so, Gene is going back to his uh, specialist, and, and they're going to find out what's going to happen after his last test results. What they were getting ready to do over at Texas Children's is tell my mama that I had about six more months to live, that they may, they may want to have Christmas a little bit early. This is in June of uh, 1958. Gordon Gibson, they have... The church secretary came to the front of the church on a Sunday morning and started taking down the names. People signed up from noon all the way to noon the next day. How about Tuesday? They got in line. They signed up all over that auditorium. Some of them doubled up and prayed for more than just one hour. They prayed, two, some of them, two or three days in a row. It was amazing, that little church of about 100 people, what, what, what God would use them to do. A week later, we have communion at the church. And Brother Gibson stops in the middle of the communion service. He told my mom and dad, Brother Summers, uh, y'all go back there and get little old Gene out of children's church, and boy, they come back there and carried me in there with those steel braces on my legs and set me on, on the uh, right there at the edge of the altar near the communion table, and he gathered them and circled them around me and my parents, and they held up the bread, and they said he told them, he said, when we break this bread, we're going to discern the body of Christ. And we're going to believe for Gene's miracle healing. Mom said, I'd never heard of any pastor holding a communion service that way. Never heard of it before. I, I watched my mom one time have Ronald Bowden kneel down on a Bible whenever his back was out. He was our postman and, and was a Pentecostal preacher himself and told my, my grandmother, Sister Downs, I'm, 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 I'm about to die with pain. I'm a, I need God's help. And God gloriously, I never heard anybody have somebody kneel down on a Bible. I, I can't tell you why they said to do it. All I can tell you is the result. God healed Brother Ronald Bowden and eventually God God healed me. Amen. 
he broke that bread and they discerned the body of Christ, people began to weep and pray in the spirit. Mom said, I felt something. I felt something. Something's happened. That next morning, 8, 830, we were bound to be there early. It was a free clinic at the time. Dad had no more, no more uh, insurance or anything from the Air Force. I just, we just had to get downtown. When we got out of the car, I started pushing myself out of my mother's arms, and I said, Mommy, I won't down. I'm five years old. Huh. 66 years ago, this coming June. I said, Mommy, I won't down. She said, Baby, I can't let you down. How many times she had let me down, and I busted my face, busted my nose, busted my lip. She said, I started reaching and getting a hold of those leathers. Those leathers on that belt hit me right about there, and I got rid of the left side. And I got a hold of the right, got rid of Mom went to fighting for her purse and those braces. And when those braces fell off of me, I pushed myself out of my mother's arms, and I ran all the way to the doctor's <laughs> office. Had not walked, had not walked yeah. in three years. They walk in here. They they come. Sometimes when they come, they don't even know that they they're they're headed into a problem. They're gonna fight something. We're all just the, the, uh, got struggles just waiting around the corner for us because we declared to the enemy that we're that there's victory for us. We we join a church and and difficult things happen to us. We we say that we're we're part of the body of Christ and we want to win souls and. And, and in the background, nobody knows that our own kids and grandkids are trying to go to hell on their own. Come on. I'm not telling you something you don't know. I'm trying to encourage you today and tell you we need a revival in our spirit. We need to come back to the place where we pray in the spirit more. And we put, man, there's things. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. That's Bible. Amen. 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 I, I'm convinced that there's not a ton of our people in the world out here today who really cares who 666 is. They're sick, 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 and they need a healing Savior. If you come, hey, you come back, sister. Yeah, yeah, come on back. I, I'm, I'm not th through, but you'll give them some hope. <laughs> the church has got to be a school for spiritual training and discipleship. Everybody wants a testimony. Everybody I know wants a testimony. But they're not willing to go through something oh. to get it. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you what Job said. Though Satan tries me, I will then come forth as gold. I've walked, I've walked out of bad situations before. It touches me to tell you this. I've walked out of what I thought was going to be a near impossibility before. And, and in the middle of hopelessness, be able to look in the face of heaven and say, God, you, you, I know you've got this one. Yeah. I know you've got my back. That's right. I'll tell you, and look back at the devil and say, is that all you've got? <laughs> you. you tried to kill us. You tried to take us down. Boy, my Bible says that God gave apostles, he gave pastors, he gave evangelists, he gave teachers. My goodness, he's, he's given all of these, uh, you know, the, the, just pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, and, and, and everybody wants to stop at verse 11 of Ephesians, <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 11. But the 12th verse says why he gives us leadership in the church. 
I'll read it to you. I don't want to quote it. I can, but I want you to hear it from the word. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I, 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 I can't, well, I told my church when I was a pastor, I said, uh, I can't do all your hospital work for you. I, I appreciate Stephanie. Baby, I, I, I heard last night, you know, thank God. Well, this is this is a fortunate neighbor. I I've got two neighbors, and man, I, I love them. I uh, my neighbor dumped his motorcycle uh, out in the middle of the yard, and me and Angie, the uh, the other neighbor, we got out there and helped him up and cradled that thing, sent him off in the ambulance, and and took care of his animals while he was gone. I I know what it is to to be a good neighbor, and I'll tell you. It's amazing what the Lord is wanting for us to do. I, I Every time I drive up in my driveway, I pray for those on my left and on my right side of that driveway that God would use us as a, an example. You may be the only Bible that they ever read. You, you, sometimes you, 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 you use your mouth on them if they could but see the fruit of your labor. Someone, I believe it was my mama taught me that said that uh, the words that I used overrun the actions of my life. And uh, I'll just tell you something. Your, you, your, your actions, your tenor, your voice, you get a lot more people involved in, in ministry with with honey and sugar than you can with vinegar. There's people out here, they know they're headed for hell. They just don't need to hear you say it. Don't shout me down when I'm doing so good. It's amazing to me how that we can be so, you know, I, I don't want anybody being ugly to my family. Man. It has been so good since this revival in my family. I, it's been so good to watch uh, the pastor there, Donald Gibson in Mercy Gate. It has been so good to watch him love on my kids and my grandkids. Man, he, 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 I've, I've watched him lay his hand on them, pat them on the back. And uh, while they were going through baptism, Jordan was uh, baptized, what, Mona, about a month ago or maybe a little more, and I couldn't be there. I was out here on the road preaching. But they, they sent me the, the video of that boy being baptized. I had to pull off the road, and the tears just flooded my eyes. And whenever that boy came out of the tank, the associate pastor had baptized him in water, and the pastor was waiting for him, wet and all. Jordan got out. He's got the one with a call on his life. And that pastor embraced him and began to prophesy over him and tell him the great things that God had. I'm telling you, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost in this church. When they come in, they got a sense that there's something different about you. They, because the Spirit of God is so many faceted. He's a leader, he's a teacher, he's a guide. It's amazing what the Holy Spirit wants to do. I preached last year to him. To you that he wants to give you spiritual vision. I'm preaching this year we need spiritual renewal. We need a revival among ourselves. Not something that one simple evangelist conjures up and you come up and feel those little duties run up down your spine. I'm talking about when you go home and you sit in front of the television and you put some of that gospel music on. What did we do yesterday morning? I cried like a baby. Sitting there listening to people sing. I get to looking back over my life. Backslidden preacher's kid. And I think I, I, I don't deserve to be able to stand in this. This is an honorable desk. Yes, you may not know how spiritual it is, but the way the, the furniture is even set up in here. Is, is a spiritual connotation. The, the elevation of this platform doesn't elevate me. 
it elevates this word. word. Right. Amen. Right. As I preach it, it goes across this podium out there to you. And the, it, with God's anointing on it, it draws you to an altar of, of redemption. Yeah. And when you get to an altar of salvation, give your heart and life to God, then you're welcome at this table. That's right. Amen. It's amazing how it goes down. I just, yeah. I just think if, if you could have seen where Jesus brought me from mm. to where I am today, you would know the reason why I love him so. You can take this world, its wealth, its riches. I don't need earth's fame. Amen. It's my desire to live for him. <laughs> If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, you would know the reason why I love him so. You can take this world, its wealth, its riches. I don't need earth's fame. It's my desire to live for him. Boy, somebody out there needs you. Amen. Somebody somebody needs you. On, we used to sing it, keep on the firing line. When I was a kid mm -hmm. in the Pentecost church, if you're in the battle for the Lord and the right, <laughs> keep on the firing line. Man, because there's people out there that need you. There, there's people going to hell. I, I don't want anybody to go to hell. You don't. You don't want your worst enemy to go to hell. I, what What this church needs is people that are open to spiritual renewal. There was a day you were on fire for God. There There was a time every day you prayed in the Spirit. Mona, tell you, she's got a particular time. I know she does. I know her. But she walks and prays and. And praise in the Spirit while she's out there. Boy, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in a brand new tongue, makes his mercies fresh and new every day. Boy, he's decided that since I love him so much, somebody one time told Joe Granberry, Joe Granberry was my mentor, and uh, I, I know a bunch of you don't know who Joe Granberry is, but he's uh, 81 years old, and um, he just was put in a nursing home oh, a couple of weeks ago. And I remember when Brother Granberry, me and him, worked cows together. And, and he was my mentor going down the freeway. I learned a lot in his old pickup truck that I didn't learn in church, just listening to my mentor. He told me things. Boy, he would tell me, boy, Gene, Your passion will, you can't hide that. If you love people, you can't hide that. If you don't love people, the gospel coming from your lips will sound like hell and damnation. And what they're needing is somebody to put an arm around them and say, hey, my heart is broken that you're not living for Jesus. Man, I tell you, I... I want God to do something so supernatural in your life. Amen. Turn your heart around. Amen. I don't know who he's got out there. For me, there was a little 23-year-old girl in the produce aisle at Kroger. And I come in, I told God, I said, I'm, Lord, I'm too tired for this. He told me, he said, I'm going to put somebody in your path today. And I said, i got flip-flops on, and I've got those big old long goofy looking shorts on cargo shorts or whatever and he, and Jesus reminded me he said huh, I wore I wore sandals I said okay boy I'll tell you I, how could I know that she was headed for suicide 
How could I know that the love of her life, that little boy, that little two-year-old that was sitting in her basket, uh, in that basket that she's pushing around the store, how could I know that that boy had decided to run off with somebody he thought was prettier than her? I raised girls. This little girl was just a beautiful little girl, and and that the 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 bio, biological father of that that baby had left her. And she was going to go end it all. And I told her, Holy Ghost, when I walked in the store, pointed her out there at the end of the produce aisle. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to close. See how important you've been? <coughs> uh, it's an old story came out of the, y'all remember the evangel? And, uh, the Evangel magazine came out of Springfield for years, and I miss it. I really do. But Amen, there's a story, Amen. true story. A little couple had got married, and uh, they got married in the ballroom of the hotel they were staying in, and it was right down on the seashore. And that early that morning, instead of staying in bed and recuperating from being in the in the wedding reception half the night. They, they decided to get up early and, and walk in the sand in their bare feet. But when they got down there, they were stopped in their tracks because something had happened in the, in the gulf that night. It had, for some reason, nobody had ever seen it before, but the water had belched up all of those starfish, and they were still alive. Every time that the water would run up over them, you could see the bubbles coming up from those starfish. And those, those, that young couple stood there knowing they really couldn't walk without stepping on any of these starfish. They, they paused and stopped in their tracks only to look up and saw a gentleman and probably in his mid-80s, an older gentleman, and realizing what he was doing took their breath. He was reaching down, taking those live starfish and tossing them back into the Gulf of Mexico. And these these young people couldn't wrap their mind around that. Tens of thousands? Who knows how many miles it went? 100,000 starfish laying on the seashore, dying in the sand. And, and this gentleman would reach down. It took all of his labor to, to throw one in the water. And they couldn't wait to get to him. When they got to him, they said, you, you've got to be insane, Elder. You, you're, you're, you're steeped on the side of not using logical sense of doing what you're doing. And it, besides, there's so many. Do you think you're making a difference? Without answering them, immediately he reached down and got a starfish and flung him back in the water. And he said, I made a difference to that one. I'll tell you, they're going to be one by one. Yeah, W-O-N by O-N-E, mm -hmm. one by one. Paul said, I am all things to all men that by all means I might save a multitude, mm -hmm. <laughs> might save some. some. You may not get them all. Won't it be wonderful there? Isn't it going to be something to get to heaven? Amen. Look around. Amen. We made it in. Boy, I know. It sure causes this dad, this grandparent, it causes this old grandpa to sure talk, causes me to I sat there yesterday morning listening to gospel music Mona tells the, tell you even though I sleep pretty good at night before she gets breakfast ready in the morning I usually uh, I could in my recliner I'd go to sleep again but not yesterday morning I started listening to some of the sweetest gospel music and I just sat there and thought about what God is doing in our family 
and putting all the things back together, stuff that I couldn't fix on my own. I've done my best. I've been a godly man. This girl requires that. A godly man in her life. Godly kids. And God answered prayer for us and decided to put our family back in church, back living for God. I don't think he's a respecter of any persons. I believe what he's done for us, he'll do for you. Yeah. It, it, it is no secret. It, it is no secret what God can do. I've got it in the wrong key. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have asked for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I've got news for you. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others he'll do for you with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret what God can do stand with me if you would let's we need to have prayer together. Hey, Mona, come. Stand with me, baby. I'm just curious. You're here and you say, you know, I just need to rededicate myself to the Lord. I, I'm just wondering if you just, would you just come by this way real quick? We just want to pray with you. We, you, you say, I had walked out on God. I'm not mad at God. God's not mad at me. I just want a special rededication in my life. I want him to know that I'm, I'm willing to go and seek and save those which are lost. I want the Lord to help me be a better witness, a greater witness. Come over here, Brother Gene, and stand facing us. And Brother Coon, come on up here. I just, I just believe there's a place for us to... I, I just I just want God to do something so supernatural in our church. I, I believe I believe there's a wind of victory in the air for us. But how many of you know what real victory is? Real victory, I've always known this, is getting up one more time than you're knocked down. And boy, we get knocked down, do we not? We have some difficult things that happen. And uh, sweetheart, you can stay right there and I'll come pray for you. Hey, you can. Amen. Sweet touch of God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I just love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I pray, Lord, right now for a supernatural touch of God. We dedicate ourselves to the cause of Christ. We rededicate ourselves, Lord, to that touch. Lord, help our message be a message of victory to the lost. Help us be able to reach out and touch others and people see the, the, the touch on our lives, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us souls for the kingdom's sake. And thank you for letting this church be a lighthouse to the lost. Lord, thank you, Lord, for touching Mark and saving him and bringing him out. God, raising him up to be well again. 
and use him in this church where he can testify to others the goodness of God in the land of the living. God just use us and rededicate us, Lord, to the cause of Christ. Some of us have got children and grandchildren, Lord, that are so lost, that need such a help. I just pray, God, that you would just reach and touch those grandkids. And Lord, right where they're seated today, children that have not been in church and haven't lived for God for years, that you'll shake them, Lord, to their roots today. And God calls them to see God's salvation in a special way. Go to them right now, Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you help the telephone to start ringing in days to come, telling moms and dads and grandparents the special things that God has caused happen in their life. I pray it in Jesus' name. Now, could we just slip our hands up and praise the Lord? Father, we just magnify you. We just glorify you. We give you glory in this house. We praise your name. You're a good God. You're a good God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, 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 well. You know, I just believe we have so much more to be happy for. Uh, I'll never forget the telephone ringing when our oldest daughter, she had been so lost, went through a terrible divorce. I wouldn't wish what she went through, what my Janelle went through. I wouldn't wish that on anybody's family. But it was ugly. It was bad. She's so lost. But I'll never forget the morning, Sunday morning, she called us. We're out on the road trying to get everybody else's kids to heaven. And my daughter calls and said she had gone and rededicated her heart to the Lord. Man, I tell you, she'll make a daddy feel good. Woo! Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Amen. Well, Pastor, I'm going to let you have this back. I've done all the damage I could do. I'll tell you, I love you folks. Thank you for letting me come. Amen. We surely do appreciate it. Appreciate the Word of God that you're bringing the Word when you come. We so appreciate that. Thank you so much. And we will be praying for you, for your ministry in the future. Amen. Yes, also, every man, single day. And uh, for your safety on the road and such as that, too. God is good to us. Amen. 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 All the time. All the time. And so we appreciate that so much. Um, we'll go ahead and be dismissed this morning. If everyone will stand and we'll be dismissed. And just um, be remember, Wednesday night at 530, we'll have our um, meal and then a, a film. Wednesday night at 530. All right. Lord, we just come to you this morning so, so thankful, Lord, that you're able to meet our needs, every one of the needs we have, Lord, whether physical, spiritual, whatever it might be, Lord. You're able to meet those needs. We're thanking you this morning, Lord, for your word that you've been given to us this morning, for your blessings to us, and for the remembrance, Lord, that you are faithful to us every single thing that we need, Lord, and every thing we need, Lord. We're thanking you for that today. We're asking now that you would be with our people, Lord. Bless them. Keep them safe, Lord, as they each go to their homes, Lord, this evening. Keep them safe on the road. Keep brother and sister summer safe on the road, we pray. Take them back home safely and then bring them back to us again at the appointed time. We're asking these things today in your name for your glory. Amen. 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 Amen.